Yeah, amen. Get in here and worship God with us this morning. Amen. All right, let's all sing together if you would. We'll talk about a good time. We're going to have the time. We'll talk about a good time. We're going to have the time.
Not too long ago, I ministered in Sunday school about a particular lady that passed away. And when she got ready to pass, she was suffering from Alzheimer's. How many of you know somebody that suffers from Alzheimer's or dementia? It's kind of sad that they lose themselves and, and forget who you are. And it's really a sad thing. But there toward the end, she didn't hardly know nobody. And I talked about how that during those last few weeks, she really begin to minister to people about Jesus Christ. Anybody believe that people need to be saved? <laughs> she was speaking in tongues. She didn't, she didn't hardly know nobody. But one thing she did know was Jesus Christ and him crucified and that this world needs to get saved. She was preaching to people, witnessing to them, speaking in tongues in the hallways of the old rest home down home. I got to thinking I love that so much. And, uh, some people probably don't think I have much of a mind as it is, but uh, if I go by way of the grave, maybe I end up with dementia. Maybe I, uh, Rob and Kelly have to take care of me. I don't know. <laughs> I've, been, I've, been warning, I've been warning Robbie. Now, remember when you was a baby, I was pretty gentle with you when I was changing your doctor. <laughs> I won't say what he said. But <laughs> The bottom line is this, when I go, I want so much of Jesus on the inside of me that it just shown to everybody around me. Praise the Lord.
through and by the blood of Jesus Christ. Didn't deserve it. We all deserve death. But Jesus died on the cross, and we can all go free. Amen. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me, if you will, this morning to the book of Acts chapter 20. I would like to begin reading verse 22. Acts 20, 22. Are you there? Say, I am there. I am there. Again, I would like to read about the Apostle Paul this morning. So in Acts 20, 22, I want to take a reading here. Verse 22, it says, Now behold, is what Paul said. Now behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me there. But none of these things move me, neither count my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. The Apostle Paul is talking to them in Ephesus. He's teaching them about salvation, if you will, but in his spirit and through all the cities he would go into, even the prophets would tell him, when you get to Jerusalem, bonds and afflictions abide you there. Yet he endeavored to still teach and still preach the gospel. Yet many people would warn him, don't go to Jerusalem. Some would beg him not to go. But yet in his spirit, the necessity was there that he needed to be there. Not knowing what he would go through, like many of us here this morning, we don't know what we go through. But yet something drives us sometimes into territory that we know can hinder us or bother us or trouble us. But yet knowing that we are in God's will, living in God's presence, still again we endeavor to do that. The Apostle Paul says something here again when he began to realize that he was going to go to Jerusalem. Even the Holy Ghost witnessed to him that he would be going. But yet in verse 24, Paul said, None of the things I've been hearing, none of the things I've been sensing has moved me. Now what that means this morning is that yes, I know that I'm headed for trouble. And yet I know when I get to Jerusalem, things are going to befall me there. And I will be afflicted and I will be put in jail. But yet I serve God. And yet there's something inside of me that said, you must do this. And yet in his mind was telling him, Paul, don't you understand that again when you get there, that's not going to be a good day for you. But yet he would proclaim none of the things I have heard. None of the things I had been feeling had moved me away from God. And I believe we need to understand that this morning in our own life individually. Because people sometimes can go through things. I've been there. Many things I did not understand. I thought, God, what am I going through? Surely you're not in this situation. Surely you're not in what I'm feeling and what I'm going through. But yet at the end of what I went through, I began to find out God was there all the time. Can somebody say amen? And yet there's been times in my life that I let things move me. And what happens to many of us sometimes, we begin to get discouraged and we get despondent and we get down and out. And yet people will try to encourage you to no avail. I, I, I want to say this to all of us today. The only one that can keep you strong is the mighty hand of God himself. The one that can pick you up out of the darkest valleys you'll ever go through. But yet we can learn from Paul, the Apostle Paul how he again went into Jerusalem. How again did he face many things time and time again? Somebody said, well, Brother Baker, that's the only thing Paul went through. Absolutely not. I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians 11, 24 through 31. I want to read some things about Paul before I get too far into my message. I want you to see what he went through. Not just in this scripture right here this morning that he was bound to go to Jerusalem, that he may be afflicted in bonds. But yet, many things he faced time and time again that he knew God was there. We find here in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24, Paul said, of the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes, save one. 39 times Paul was beaten. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. 
A night and day have I been in the deep, in journeyings often, in pearls that were pearl me danger of waters, in pearls of robbers, in pearls by my own countrymen, in pearls by the heathen. In pearls, can you see all the danger he was in? In pearls in the city. In pearls in the wilderness. In pearls in the sea. In pearls among false brethren. In weariness and painfulness. In watching often. In hunger and thirst. In fastings often. In cold and nakedness. Beside those things that are without. That which cometh upon me daily. The care of all the churches. Then Paul would say, who is weak? I am not weak. Who is offended and I burn not? If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmities. The God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knowing that I lie not. Can you get a picture of what Paul went through? I don't know about you today, but I stand before you to say sometime, I'm ashamed of myself. I'm ashamed that I let the smallest thing move me away from the presence of God. The smallest thing that will make me doubt who God really is. But yet we would know this, that the word of God was written for our betterment, for our example, for our learning. How we can see what the other men of God went through many years ago that still happens today. You're going to be talked about. You're going to be ridiculed. You're going to be put down. You're going to be laughed at. And many times we let these things move us. You know why we do? Because sometimes we're more flesh than we are spirit. And we let things get to us so easy. How many have been there? How many stayed home from church before because you got your feelings hurt? How many walks around sometimes having a bad day and been sad and down and out because someone did you wrong? Can I remind you again, we need to go back into the Word of God and remind yourself, this is not the first time that someone went through what you're going through. Matter of fact, I'll go one step further. Everything will ever go through and everything will ever feel and ever opposition that will come against us. Jesus took the Mount Calvary and paid a price for you and I, amen, to come through this, amen, by faith in Him. Can someone say amen? amen. See, Paul said, none of the things I've been hearing and none of the things I've been sentient in the Holy Ghost moves me. I'm still going to go. I'm still going to preach. I'm still going to work for God. I'm still going to sing on. I'm still going to shout on. I'm going to dance on. I'm going to go to church. Even I'm going to rejoice if I'm in prison like he was before. He said at the midnight hour, they begin to pray him to Paul and Silas. Amen. They begin to pray and they begin to sing. And all of a sudden, amen, the jailhouse begin to rock. The jail doors opened up. Paul said, I can go free. And the song Brother Wayne sung, I can go free. Because see, even though he was bound in prison, he was not bound in spirit. He said, even though I'm in the dark dungeon and maybe the water is flipping around me and it's musty and cold and empty and the rats are all around the place and it's so dingy and dark and I cannot see my head in front of me. Amen. I still believe that none of these things are going to move me. I'm going to hold on to God. I change in hand. I'm going to make it through this one more time. Amen. I'm talking to somebody here this morning that's discouraged, downhearted, you know, I feel when my wife and I was kind of quarantined at home, I feel for those that didn't have a spouse, that didn't have a family member with them, they were all by themselves, I feel for them, I really do. All they have is TV or a book to read, which I hope was the Bible. Lonely, empty on the inside. See, it doesn't matter what the situation may be. We have a promise that God gave us. He said, I will never leave you. Amen. Woo, glory be to you. I'll never forsake you. I will go with you all the way. Come on, somebody say all the way. That means through everything you ever go through, God will go with you. Hallelujah. And that's how Paul felt about his life. And you see, Paul cannot make me live my life, but I must get into the Word of God and make my mind up that I have a God that will be there. When the going gets rough, He'll go with me. Amen. I was in my bedroom laying down to sleep the other night. 
as always, my wife and I prayed. We got through praying, and I laid down, and I kept praying and talking to the Lord. Had such a sensation that God was with me. Not only was God with me, but angels. Yeah. Amen. Angels were getting capped around me. Somebody said, do you believe in angels? Yes, I do, and you should too. Because yeah. again, when Peter was in prison, yeah. locked up in prison, what showed up with the angels of God and smote him on the side and said, get up and put on your sandals. Yeah. And that jail cell door opened up. He got to the gate of the city, opened up, and began to realize it was God that set him free. Yeah. Now, I don't know about you, but I can really complain when I want to. I can really murmur about things when I want to. I, I, I can feel sorry for myself when I really want to. Am I by myself up here? Who it seemed like you think God had forsaken you. But Paul said, hey, and Peter said, hey, whatever I go through, it's not going to move me. At the end of this trial, at the end of this hardness, I'm still going to have my hand raised to heaven. I'm rejoicing in my God, and my God will bring me through one more time. None of these things move me. See, it's always been Satan's position to be against God and to be against God's people always. You see, when someone does you wrong, it's not that person that's really doing you wrong. It's the spirit Amen. that got in them Amen. that moved them to do you wrong. Amen. When someone gossiped, which again is a sin, it, it's not them that really done that. They allowed themselves to be used by Satan to gossip, to tell tale, to backbite, whatever it may be. But can I remind you again, we, we have to be aware of the fact that, that what happens to us is always, again, by the powers of Satan. Satan is always on the job. And what happens again when things begin to go wrong? We begin to think wrong. We get overwhelmed with things. David the psalmist said, with my heart overwhelmed, with my heart overwhelmed, and I can't take no more. I don't know what to do. He said, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. And that rock is a man called Jesus. Come on, somebody praise him. Lead me to the rock that's higher than I. Here's how, here's how Isaiah says it in 59.9. He said, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When, not if, but when the enemy comes in like a flood. Now I want you to understand something. Satan wants to move you away from the presence of Almighty God. He wants you to throw your hand up and get discouraged and just give up on God. But I'm telling you right now, I still believe God has a people. I said, I still believe God has a people that will hold on to Him. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord in us, the Spirit of the Lord in us shall lift up a standard against Him. It's always been Satan's position to move you away from God. I may not know all the songs now, but years ago you used to sing a song, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved just like a tree planted by the water. I shall not be moved. I think I read, again, years ago I went through something, I think I related to the church here before, but I went through something in my life and people in the church knew I was going through something, they were praying for me. Had a lady come one time to me in the church service after the church service was over with and she said, Brother Baker, I know you're going through something, I know it's troubled you, what are you going to do? And I looked at her, I said, here's what I'm going to do, I'm going to trust in my God and uh, again, when I get through this, uh, you come and see where I stand. I still want to stand for Jesus. I want to know that when the enemy comes in to destroy me, when the enemy comes in to make me down, when the enemy comes in to flick my body, amen, I believe the Spirit of God on the inside of me will raise up a standard against me that I once again will succeed in what I do for God. Amen. I don't want to be moved because Satan come against me. You need to hear me this morning because again, it's not about what you can do and what I can do and what God does through His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We've got victory. Anybody feel victorious this morning? So we're not moved by overwhelming power that Satan brings our way. How many times has Satan told you, you're not going to make it? How many times has he told you, you're not going to be healed? You're not even saved. Why, you don't have the Holy Ghost. Hey, there's no miracles anymore. 
He rises up against you, but again, it may overwhelm you. But remember this right here. When he comes in like a flood, greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. Can somebody say amen? I tell you right now, the Spirit of Almighty God will always come to your defense and make you be an overcomer. Again, many times we're trying to be moved away from our faith. What is our faith? What God's Word tells us. The Bible says again in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the Word of God. I don't want to be moved from my faith. I want to stand strong in my faith. We find in 1 Peter 1, 7, where Peter said the trial of your faith be much more precious than that of gold that perisheth. Though it be tried with fire, it might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of our, of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said the trial of your faith, the trial of your faith, we're going to be tried every day more than more or less. We're going to be tempted every day to do something wrong. Satan will come against us and say, you're not going to stand this time. But I'm telling you right now, I want to hold on, amen, to the Word of God. I want to know that my Redeemer liveth. I want to know when I open my Bible, I'm feeding faith into my soul. Every time I praise God, I'm feeding faith in my soul. Every time I see a miracle, I'm feeding faith into my soul. If the devil says I'm not going to make it, I know I will. Because the devil's a liar and a father all lies. Can someone say amen? I want to know that when my faith has been tried, that I'll come out better on the other end, stronger. Yeah. Satan will move you away from your, from your faith. He'll do everything he can, again, to not let you stand for Jesus Christ. How many times again has he come against you and your family? Your kids will never be saved, but yet by faith you've been praying. You'll never get a better job, but by faith you've been praying. You'll never have better than this, but by faith you've been praying. It's because, again, we know that nothing moves us when we're a child of God. You know why? Because, again, we find in the book of Matthew where Jesus told his disciples, I follow this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And again, that rock is Jesus Christ. If you stand on him, amen, we have a rock that will not move. If I'm on that rock today, I cannot be moved. Amen, I'm going to lift my hand on my worst day, I still want to praise Him. On my worst day, I still want to rejoice. On my worst day, I want to get in that Word and will feed my soul and build my faith. Amen. Satan knows that faith will move mountains. He knows that you'll come through by faith. Can someone say amen? amen. So again, look at the Apostle Paul that all that he went through. He sometimes had no one by his side. But yet he will say these words again. Nothing moves me. The thing I've been hearing, nothing moves me. Oh, I remember years ago when we built this building right here, we were in today, a new sanctuary. First started digging the hole here. I some men and some women come to me and say, that will never happen. You'll never build a church back behind the new, the old one. You'll end up never happen. And yet we kept on digging. Amen. And eventually it came out of the ground. And eventually the walls went up. And eventually the brick came up. And yet it's sat here for many years uncompleted because of finances. But can I remind you of some of the come a time that God spoke to my heart and said it's ready to finish that building. And you know what happened when we begin to, again, we had to meet with the church people and they all agreed to do, do the same thing. Let's get this thing done. Do you know we never had to borrow money? What happened when people got on board with this because it was in God's time and the devil said it would never happen. But I had faith in God. This congregation had faith in God and everything began to come together. Every time we had a need to do something on this booty right here, here come the money. Amen. Every time we had a spit, here come the money. And the time we moved to this new sanctuary, it was paid full and full. Can somebody say amen? We don't owe a dime on this. You know why? Because somebody said, I'm not going to be moved by what people tell me. I'm going to be moved by the power of God Almighty and I have a spirit of God in me that says I can. I didn't do it by myself. This congregation helped me. I mean money came out of just seemed like nowhere. Every time I got it, every time this church had a need, I would take it to the congregation. I told him I said we well, need this much money. Sometime we need twenty thousand dollars. Here it came. Come on now. I, I, I mean, he, 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 even, even the heating system here at one time was $188,000. And a man came in here, did it for us, half that cost, and it was paid off. Can I remind you again how good God is? Amen. See, when people said you can't, God said I can. He said I'm getting a flip and I can do all things through Christ. With strength and speed. So you've got to get a hold of that this morning. 
God knows our, that we're frail. He knows that we're only human. He, he knows that we sometimes can walk in the flesh more than the spirit. He knows that we fail him. He knows that we do wrong sometimes. Oh, but then at the end of the day, you'll find yourself on your knees crying out to God and saying, Lord, forgive me of my shortcomings. I still believe God. My faith is still intact. I'm not going to be moved. I'm not going to be again stepped backwards. Amen. As the Apostle Paul said, I'm pressing toward the mark for the prize of a high calling in Christ. Jesus. There are other, again people that will stop us from being who we are. Some of you got a gift in your life. Get to preach, get to sing, get to ministry in different ways. And people can you said, ah, oh, you're not equipped for that. You cannot do that. But can I remind you again, God called you, not man. And I believe one thing with all my heart today, we stand by faith, we'll see things that begin to materialize. And I believe today with all my heart today, that when we stand on the word of God, we cannot be defeated. You know why? Because over 2,000 years ago, Satan tried to defeat Jesus on Mount Calvary. But look at the outcome there. Amen. He said, you can destroy this temple, but in three days I'll raise it again. He wasn't talking about a natural temple. He was talking about this body he lived in. And how many knows again that's truth? On the third day, he rose again, and he conquered death and hell. And I'm telling you right now, he's still the same God. He's still the same power and still the same anointing that we don't have to be moved. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. People will come against you, and it, it, it hurts. I've been there myself. But one thing I do know, that you're not trying to please people. You please the Lord. Amen. And when you please the Lord, you're not going to be moved. How many ever stayed awake at night time because someone hurt you? Or got things on your mind that you thought you'll never get through? How many know who that is? It's not God. It's Satan trying to torment you. And again, don't be moved by these things, because again... Find out what Paul said, none of the things I hear and none of the things I've seen have moved me. I'm going to continue on in the work that God gave me. John 8, 32 tells us, you and I, you shall know the truth. And the truth will make you free. I don't know how you feel this morning in your life, but I want to be free. Amen. Don't you put man on the pedestal. Don't you put a preacher on the pedestal. Amen. Don't you put singers on the pedestal. You look up to Jesus. Because when the going gets rough, he's the only one who will stand by your side. He's the only one that will be there to bring you through. But you cannot let things move you. Many people have walked out with God. Many people have backslid. Many people don't go to church today because Satan moved them out of the pew. Moved them, and I say this again. I said it many times. I'll say it again this morning. That many people have left the church before they leave the building. They backslide, sit right in their pew because they let Satan move them in different directions. I'm telling you right now, when we come together in one mind and one spirit, one accord, amen, I believe the heaven opens up and the glory of God comes down and begin to bless your soul. Don't you give up on your children. Don't you give up on your husband and wife. Don't give up praying for them. I'm telling you right now, don't let Satan move you away from the power of Almighty God because it's real in my soul. It's real in your soul. None of these things move me. Satan will form a weapon against us. The Bible talks about he'll throw fiery darts at us. And that's why we have all the whole armor of God. But look what Isaiah said in 54, 17. Isaiah said, no weapon. Everybody say no weapon. No weapon. Now you've got to get this in your spirit. Because sometimes I think we think, well, a small weapon cannot get to me. A boy, when Satan brings out the big guns and I'm done for. That's not what the Bible said. No weapon. Say it again. No weapon. Formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise up against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. I want you to understand what Isaiah is saying here. And these men of God that again wrote the word of God, moved on by the Holy Ghost, they knew what they were talking about. They experienced losses. They experienced bad days. They knew how it felt to be depressed and down and out. But yet they would resurrect again from their despair and say, No weapon formed against me shall I prosper. And I believe, again, we don't have to give in to Satan. When the devil begins to throw dark at you, put up the shield of faith and begin to realize, I have on the whole armor of God and I will come through this. Amen. You're not by yourself. You've got the Father. You got the Son, you got the Holy Ghost, you got the angels, you got the Word. Do you know what the Bible talks about in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6? What the Word of God is called? The sword of the Spirit. When Satan brings a weapon against you, guess what? I got a weapon too. 
I ain't gonna whip him that will counteract his weapon every time. I don't care how much he boasts and how much he brags. Amen. I will overcome him to him by the word of God because it is written, man shall live by again the word of God. Not just by bread alone, but by his word. So when you begin to realize, bring out the weapon against Satan, you're not going to be moved. Plant your feet in the word of God. You're not going to be moved. Satan is a liar and the father of all lies. The Bible said Jesus, Again in John 8, 48, that he's a liar. Yeah. Why would you listen to a liar? Anybody here knows anybody that lies? Yeah. Hope you're not one of them, right? Yeah. I know people that lie. I mean, sometimes they're convinced that the lie they're telling me is true. They lie so much that they believe their own lie. And I don't like listening to them or taking advice from them. Well, we need to understand that we do not want to hang around Satan because he is a liar. Everything that comes out of his mouth is a lie. And I believe with all of my heart today, again, that we can overcome him by the truth of God's word. And I'm telling you right now, the opposite of lie is a truth. And I believe again, let me say it again, you shall know this truth and the truth will make you free. Don't let Satan keep you on your seat. If you feel like dancing, dance on. If you feel like shouting, shout on. If if you feel like rejoicing, rejoice on. But whatever you do, don't let Satan move you away from God. Woo, hallelujah. I know what I've heard. And I know what Satan tells me. But I will not be moved. I've got my mind on Jesus. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving in. I want to encourage you this morning to plant your feet in God. See, again, I think one of the biggest things that many people fail to understand you have to make your mind up which God you're going to serve. The Bible said you cannot serve two masters. You love the one or hate the other, but you cannot serve God and mammon, which is money. And again, the Bible tells you and I, it's not wrong to have money, but the love of money is the root of all evil. How many loves your money? If you love your money, give it away. Amen. If you got money and you don't love it, keep it. But I'm telling you right now, the biggest thing we do is that we let Satan come into us and lie about the things that we can have. I'm telling you right now, God wants the best for you. He wants you to be the overcomer. He wants you, again, to be covered by the blood of the Lamb. He wants you to take this word and use it as a sword against the power of Satan. When the enemy comes in like a flood, it's the Spirit of God in you. I mean, Lord, we're made up of spirit, soul, and body. The Spirit before it got saved, it was carnal. But the Spirit of God resurrected in us and now has saved the soul that was carnal. And now we become spiritual. The soul is our intellect, our, our, our emotions, our senses about us. That's what our soul is. How I many know again, when you were in sin, your soul desired things of the world. But now that you're a child of God, your soul desires the things of God. And the closer you get to God, amen, the farther away from Satan you can get. Because the Bible tells you and I, if we draw nigh to him, that he will draw nigh to us. I want to walk with him, and I want to talk with him, but I want to know that I'm lining up with the word of God. And nobody here is perfect. We have not arrived in heaven yet. Until we get there, we pray every day, every day that God will help us to be strong in our faith and in our walk with God. But I don't want to be moved away from God. Amen. The bottom line of what I'm saying this morning is Satan's job. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, many people get confused about what Satan's trying to do. Their mind gets boggled down that Satan throws so many darts at them. But all he's trying to do is move you away from God. He's trying to discourage you to give up and not hold on. But Paul said, none of these things move me. None of them. Behold, I go bound in the Spirit into Jerusalem. But none of these things move me. And neither do I count my life dearer to me. And what Paul said when he said that, that I don't count my life dearer to me, he said, I've surrendered to God. It's his life anyway. Again, look at Philippians 121, what Paul says again. He, he said, for me to live is Christ, but for me to die is gain. That means that my life belongs to him. He said, well, if I live, I'm the Lord's. If I die, I'm the Lord's. So whether I live or whether I die, I belong to the Lord. Can somebody say amen? That's a win-win situation. Forever child of God to surrender to the Lord completely. Amen. How you do that is yield your mind, body, soul to him. Say, God, here I am. Don't let things move you. 
Don't be discouraged. Uh, I'm not saying you won't be discouraged, but I'm saying don't be there very long. Find your way out through praise and worship. Again, get into the Word of God, which is your sword of the Spirit. Cut him down. Cut Satan down. Stop his lies in your mind. Anybody know why we have the helmet of salvation? The helmet of salvation is just so that we're saved. Our mind, we know by faith we're saved. But it also, what does the helmet do? Look at football players. Why, why do they wear a helmet? To protect the mind, the brain, if you will. That's what God gave you and I. Satan cannot hear you. Or you cannot hear Satan otherwise. You cannot hear Satan when your ears are muffled to him. You have on the helmet of salvation. The Bible teaches you and I neither give place to the devil. Don't you welcome him into your home or into your life. Somebody says, I don't do that. But you turn on the TV. You watch ungodly movies, ungodly things. Come on now. Same with the internet. And you begin to realize that now Satan's coming into my mind. You start thinking evil thoughts and bad thoughts and things that should not be in your mind. You need to realize, put on the helmet of salvation. Let your mind be protected by the Word of God. Don't be moved. I'm going to come to a close. But I don't know what you're going through this morning. I don't know how close you are to God. I don't know what's motivating you. I don't know what excites you. If you wake up in the morning and you're excited about doing some worldly thing, then your excitement is wrong. You should be excited about serving God. You should be excited about living for God with a made-up mind. The Apostle Paul, on his way to Jerusalem, had been told time and time again, Paul, you're going to suffer. You're going to have afflictions and bonds. But he said, I know what you're saying to me, but none of what you're telling me moves me. You've got to plant your feet into the Word of God and make your mind up today, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved just like a tree. Planted by the water, I shall not be moved. Oh, I shall not be. Moved. Come on, lift your hand and praise him. I shall not be. I know bonds and afflictions abide me. I know Satan will attack me, but none of these things can move me. I've got my eyes on Jesus. I shall not. Come on, one more time all together. I said, I shall not be, I shall not be blessed. I shall not be, I shall not be blessed. Just like a tree planted by the water. Oh, I know I shall not be blessed. You go ahead right now. But God, I need your help right now. I believe when the enemy comes in like a flood, that the Spirit of God will raise up a standard against him. I shall not. Woo! Glory be to God. Come on. Say it again. I know. I shall not be. I know. I shall not be. I shall not be. I shall not be.
If you believe that, give you some praise. I'm not going to be moved. Whether I live or whether I die, I'm not going to be moved. I'm going to trust in the Lord. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Glory be to God. I know. in you. Don't be moved by that. Keep looking up. Keep praising God. Stay in that word. We're going to win. We'll get through all this. Many times right now we feel like we're just in a desolate state. We're, we're sitting like we're in, in a desert place even. We're so dry and empty. But God is there. It's not about our feelings. It's about our faith in God. Trust in his word this morning. And don't let Satan move you away from this. Read your Bible every day. Pray every day. Look up every day. Cast your cares on God every day. Say, Lord, I believe in you. Amen. We're back here next Sunday morning. Look for a great time in the Lord. And again, stay encouraged in the Lord. Don't be moved by Satan. Don't give no place to Satan. Look to God and give him all honor and praise. I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm going to ask you again to say this with me all together. It's been good to be in the house. Oh, the Lord. God bless you. Have a great week. I'd like to say if anybody wants any uh, Memorial Day flowers, there's some downstairs.